When I announced I was running for president, I said I believed that the core values of this nation, our very democracy, uh, was at risk. And events in recent days have made that even clearer, not only to me, but I think to everyone. We have a president who believes there's no limit to his power. We have a president who believes he can do anything and get away with it. We have a president who believes he's above the law, pursuing the leader of another nation to investigate a political opponent to help win his election is not the conduct of an American president. The allegations that blocked hundreds of millions of dollars, that he blocked hundreds of millions of dollars in congressionally approved aid to another country, and it's an allegation, uh, unless he agreed to uh, smear a political opponent, is not the conduct of an American president. Denying Congress the information which it is constitutionally entitled to and obstructing its efforts to investigate actions is not the conduct of an American president. It's an abuse of power. It undermines our national security. It violates his oath of office. And it strikes at the heart of the sworn responsibility of the president a president has to put national interest before personal interest. I knew when I decided to run, this president would attack me and anyone else who he thought would be a threat to his uh, winning again. Well, uh, that's what he does. That's what he's always done. And note that even though every uh, reputable publication has looked at the charge that has been uh, made against me, uh, and found them baseless and untrue, and without merit, that's not about to stop him. Uh, I can take the political attacks. They'll come and they'll go, and in time, they'll soon be forgotten. But if we allow a president to get away with shredding the United States Constitution, that will last forever. Too many people, too many good, decent people have taken oath to this nation and given their lives over the past 243 years to let that happen. Too many people are saving this nation right now and honoring the oath they've taken to let that happen. This isn't a Democratic issue or Republican issue. It is a national issue. It is a security issue. And it's time for this administration to stop stonewalling and provide the Congress with all the facts it needs, including a copy of the formal complaint made by the whistleblower. And it's time for the Congress to fully investigate the conduct of this president. The president should stop stonewalling this investigation and all the other investigations into his alleged wrongdoing. Using his full constitutional authority, Congress, in my view, should demand the information it has a legal right to receive. If the Congress does not, if the President does not, does not comply with such a request from the Congress, if he continues to obstruct Congress and flout the law, Donald Trump will leave Congress, in my view, no choice but to initiate impeachment. That would be a tragedy, but a tragedy of his own making. I've always believed, and still do, that America is a truly special and unique nation, better than any other nation in history. We have made the experiment of self-government work. We've always been a beacon to other countries around the world. We know who Donald Trump is. It's time to let the world know who we are. Thank you very much. All right, so actually, Let's go. We've got David Chalian, Dana Bash, Jennifer Rogers. Jen, just first to you, it's like he heard you say abuse of power. You were like, enough with this quid pro quo. Call it what it is, abuse of power. That is exactly what Joe Biden said. And he kept saying, you know, to this White House, stop stonewalling. And you and I were talking before because I was wondering how, how quickly could, could Congress, you know, get rolling on this? And yeah, so there, there are a couple related issues, right? A couple things they have to do. They have to collect information, and then they have to draft these articles of impeachment. So my question is, first of all, how far are they going to go? Are they going to stick with kind of the basics, the Ukrainian abuse of power situation, the Mueller report, and those violations, obstruction of justice and campaign finance violations? Or are they going to go off into other things like, you know, the president um, enriching himself, 
uh, while in, in an office and the attacks on the press yeah. and you know there are all sorts of things abuse of the pardon power that he's done how far are they going to go and as part of that calculation is how long is it going to take mm -hmm. there's been a lot of stonewalling they've had to go to court on some things other things they haven't even really tried very hard to get now if they're in informal in in formal impeachment proceedings it should be better because uh, that's an actual process in the Constitution judges should recognize that it needs to move more quickly but will it you know you still have to get in front of a judge mm -hmm. if the White House is going to continue the stonewalling routine that they've been doing yeah. so that issue may impact how far they go with the articles of impeachment how many different areas of presidential misconduct they want to go into in the first place okay and just let's go back to just the significance that we just heard from a man who would like to be the next president who found himself in the middle of all of this, right, who was basically saying to the president, if he doesn't comply, um, then, then they should begin these impeachment proceedings. David Chalian is our CNN political director. And David, I know you were listening to his every word. What did you think? Yeah, well, uh, the visual, first of all, right, was uh, all those flags behind him standing at the podium like that, at a, at a lectern like that. This was to convey a presidential image mm. uh, against uh, what he thinks is clearly unpresidential uh, behavior. So, so the visual was really interesting to me to Brooke, but I would also say, you know, this wasn't just a, a press conference on the fly or taking a question. This was a, a, a very formal statement from Vice President Biden. What I will also say is we can't ignore the, the political reality that Vice President Biden is in, right? He understands uh, that his closest competitor for the Democratic nomination, Elizabeth Warren, has been out there calling for full-bore impeachment process since April in this contest. And he knows that the, watching what has happened in these last few, day, few days, that the political calculus with Democrats on Capitol Hill uh, has completely shift, shifted beneath his feet. So he needed to get out there uh, before giving Warren yet another uh, opportunity sort of to draw a contrast with him and move further than where he has been in this process. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that is clear, I think, in his intention today as well. Just curious, do we know, has there been any, any conversation between Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi over this? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, okay. Gloria Borger, let me go to you. What did you think of what the, the former vice president said? Well, I think it, it was no surprise that he had to come out, as David was saying, and be uh, tough and stronger than he's been in the past, calling for an impeachment inquiry if the White House continues to stonewall. And he came directly out and called it an abuse of power. And uh, that he said it, it, uh, it, you know, strikes at the heart of the responsibility of the presidency. And uh, uh, with the flags behind him, I mean, it was a, it was a sort of a presidential setting, as David was saying. And when Biden stands in front of a lectern like that with that backdrop it reminds you that he was vice president and when he talks about the presidency he knows what he's talking about and he was quite dismissive obviously of the charges that the president has raised against him and said that reputable publications uh, have dismissed them um, and he said that the president knows that they're that they are untrue and they are mm. untrue he said so he at once defended himself and then took the turn and said, you know, I've got to defend the country. This isn't about me. This isn't about my family. We expected these kind of attacks from this president, but I now have to go this step further because this is about the country. Mm -hmm. Arlette Sines was, was in the room as Joe Biden was speaking, and we know every single word, right, meticulously chosen for, for that statement. Tell me about just the decisions that went into the sentiment and what else you're learning from Team Biden. Well, it's very clear that Biden here is trying to present this contrast uh, to President Trump, and he's linking it all back to the start of his campaign. When he said he entered this campaign because he felt that the core values of this country are at stake, and he says that this is a moment that further highlights that. And so the former vice president, you know, he has not gone as far as his 2020 opponents who have uh, outright called for impeachment. This is the furthest that he has gone in these calls, saying that if the president doesn't comply, then there's no other choice but for Congress to impeach. But this gives uh, former Vice President Joe Biden just another opportunity to try to uh, present his case 
for the direction that the country needs to be taken in uh, compared to the current president. And I thought everything that um, the folks before me were say was saying was very interesting. The, the formality of this event, he was announced uh, with the voice of God as the former vice president uh, coming up to the podium with those flags behind him. It was very clear that they were trying to uh, send a presidential type message mm -hmm. as he's trying to present this contrast to the current president.